And then I'll get into game mode here in my simulator or configuration in, in Reactor. And I click the button and it turns on. As you can see, I could hear it in the background. The relay was flipping and so on. And that was all because of this code. Now, I could now make a different button and then put in the action zero here because what I just did now, click is to turn it off. Hello there and welcome to a video from Innovation Lab in Skahoy. This is about the HTTP device core and there's a wiki page here on the Skahoy wiki where you can where you can read about it. And uh, I'm basically going through this example to give you a good uh, idea about how it works. There's also, as usual, a, a list of parameters you can use and there is Reactor here. So. The basic configuration of this device core, which is one that you install in uh, packages as usual, you find it here, it's called uh, Core uh, Protocol HTTP. Mm, maybe I need to make numbers a little bit bigger here, like that, okay. So if I go in here, you see <clears throat> the basic configuration that we have for one device is a target domain. And that looks like this one. And then you can have an initialization command. This is sent when we connect first time. So if you have any need for that, you can put it in here. Notice this is a path and that's where we go from here because this domain is everything, you know, that's always the basis for our requests for this device. You can add more devices if you want. So if you go to the bottom here, you can add new entries to devices. So you have device one, you can have device two, three and so on. So you can have multiple of these. And for each of those, a different URL, of course. The cool thing about that is you can change the IP address or the domain and so on, and um, it, it won't affect your path. So it's actually quite great that it's divided like that. And then there's a test command. The test command would be the one that gets sent in case over here in Reactor, where most people work, you press the test button. Right, that, that, that one, yes. <clears throat> so you would press that and you had that test function uh, sent. But I want to get right into it because um, much of the time, if you want to use the HTTP device core, you're really interested in just doing something quick and dirty. And uh, you still, uh, hopefully with the same device, but, and um, and then you, you would click a button like this one where I have, I've currently already set up a parameter from the device core. You see it right here. So I could edit this one and it comes up here. You see it's from protocol HTTP, slash one, that's our device number one. This is uh, would be two, three, and so forth if you have multiple destinations. Cowboy style is our parameter name. And if you wanted to change, you could basically look in here. This is where you have all the parameters that we can work with. But this one is the one that are uh, the quickest way to get started. And then you see the meta values. This is where you choose your request type. You can choose post, you can type in get, you can also have a patch, you can have delete, you can also have put. So all those, but in this case, it's a post request. The path that we are having it go to is netio.json and the headers are this. So these have to be prefixed string colon and then everything after that point is, is the content that are being used for the header. In case of the header, as you'll see, if you read the wiki page, you'll read that the wiki page has to be, um, no, on the wiki page, it says that the header has to be a JSON object. And then every entry in that object, like content type, colon, application JSON, then you could have comma and then some other header. That would be your headers. It's gonna be passed like that and provide those headers like that. The, um, the path here is the path that gets applied right after the URL, the main URL, and then the body is the body that gets sent. And this is where you, you, you get application specific because most of the times when you have a post request, you also have some sort of body of content that gets posted to the device. So let's go to NetIO, which is this little cool device that are made by a Czech company, uh, good friends of ours in the business of devices and control and so forth. They have cool power sockets that you can turn on and off via the internet, but if you, or via network, and if you go to the machine to machine API page, you look for JSON, it's enabled, it has a password read, uh, username password here, which in our case is just NetIO, NetIO. Then uh, down here we have um, 
some information about the JSON API that we are going to work with. And there's an example of how to set an output to one and how to set it to uh, uh, how to set it on and off and toggle it. I can reveal to you guys that this is the code that gets um, that is being used if we want to turn on output number two and turn it on. If we want to turn it off, we change this into a zero. Okay. So I just provided this little document so I have something to copy paste. Now, if I click here, we'll later see that we just get the status of the device, like what you know, what outputs do we have and how much power is it consuming and uh, delays the state. You see state is one here, state is zero here, because if we look at the power sockets, the first one is on and the other two are off. So you should be able to see that there's this reflection of the actual API and what I'm doing here. In other words, I'm trying to turn the first power socket on with this piece of JSON. And now let's see if it works. So I can just cancel because I didn't do any change. Let's just reload over here because this is our uh, output list that we're seeing. So we can see this PC camera is, is off. I'm just going to turn it. No, it's on, but I will turn it off. All right. And then I'll get into game mode here in my simulator or configuration in, in Reactor. And I click the button and it turns on. As you can see, I could hear it in the background. The relay was flipping and so on. And that was all because of this code. Now, I could now make a different button and then put in the action zero here because what I just did now, click is to turn it off. All right. So, so far, so good. That's the cowboy style way of doing it. And you can get a lot of stuff done this way. But there are also ways to do this, which are um, more structured, if you will. And you just read on in the article. That's about command configuration. And you already kind of saw it a little bit when you saw the configuration of the device. Because in here, if you scroll down, you get into something called HTTP path table. And here we have two entries. It's actually the last entry that we want to look at first. So entry number two. And in this entry, you see this is a post type request going to the path we had just before. There's a description, which is super nice, and a state label. And then there's a header like before, but notice the body is slightly different because what I'm doing here is I'm making it flexible. So the ID, in other words, the power socket over here and the action, whether it's on or off, which is zero or one, can be derived from some parameters. So this is already in place and I'll go back to home and there you can see as I am uh, entering configuration. Sorry about that. Uh, I click this button just next to. And if we look at the configuration here, then in this case, I'm using a different action. And by the way, if you want to, uh, if you want about these actions, they are the same used in the TCP and UDP device core. So uh, label gives you it's, it's just returning the label that comes from configuration. Status is uh, something I'll return to in this video for how we can capture status of the commands. Then you have toggle on and off. And uh, if you just want to send a string, one string, or basically request one, one path, then you will just use the on trigger. So uh, off trigger would be more rare and um, toggle, I guess that depends. Somehow it maybe on trigger is the most popular of these actions if it wasn't the cowboy trigger, which is the one that I just showed you. But anyway, um, let's we, we pick the on trigger for this one because it is the on off and toggle triggers that has the ability to deal with meta values in terms of a an integer parameter. The, um, the cowboy trigger has all the commands and headers and request type broken out directly here in meta values. But here we shield it off a little bit. We put it into the configuration, as you can see. And what we need to do now is to pick our power socket and what to do with it. And then, of course, we also need to pick which command it is. So it was the second command from our table, not the first. I had the first one and I had a second one and it was the second one. Sorry, there are no labels here. We may add it later. But so you need to count. And the second command is the one that we are executing. So let's see what happens if I just submit this and then we, we, we try it out. Are you ready? Click. And it turns on. Now, if I click it a second time, it's going to stay on. So that's not a lot of help. We would have to program this in a way so that it changed to a different trigger. But my point is, if I could go up here and change this to a zero, then we would turn it off. And if I could go up here and change this to a two, it would be the second power socket that I would now turn on. Yeah. 
And I want to shut that down quite quickly because that is hosting a device that is pretty noisy. So I'll kill it just quickly once again here. So you see that um, those those numbers that we saw inside the configuration of the device core, the command here, the slash backslash D1 and D2, they insert those numbers. And there's also an explanation in the Wiki article how this works. So that is mentioned. Hmm, placeholders, that was in the end. So uh, we can use this to just insert new lines and hexadecimal bytes, but these placeholders are in case you use the toggle on off trigger commands or parameters, then you can use these to get in touch with the P1 and P2 meta values. All right, let's move on. Because the, the other thing that I want to show you is uh, the first command that I actually put in here is not a command that is intended for you to actually execute with the button. It is intended to be periodically requested. There's not really a way we can check this, but if we put in three seconds here, every three seconds, it is going to uh, request this and try to match it up with this and then save the return value inside the device call. Let me show you how that works. First of all, the content that we are requesting with a non-set request type, that means get, will be this JSON. And the regular expression that is put into this matching field is going to look for ID and then some white space and then the number one and then some white space until a comma. And then it's going to just take everything it can find un unless it finds a closing brace until it finds the label state and then maybe some white space, then a colon, maybe some white space, and then numbers zero to nine in some quantity, but at least one. That's what this one gives you. And let me see, if we go to the JSON, that means we find ID and one. So it will match this one up, then it will bypass all this stuff until it finds state. And after state, it will, it will match this one up. And that is what you get in parentheses in this matching pattern. So whatever is in this parenthesis is what gets stored in the device call. Now, let me show you that this, this, this actually works. So um, for that, to be clear to you guys, um, I decided to show you our test tube, which is some of you will know what this is and others won't. But if we go to the status, um, because this basically shows you the commands and we can manipulate those commands from in here. You see, for instance, the labels are stored here. So this is what we get. We have the uh, on trigger and off trigger, which we can fire from in here to test them. But the status is currently giving us a zero. Why? Because this is, hmm, let's just reload. It is in fact zero right now. But what I will show you is as I'm turning this one on, this value is going to change into a one. You see, and now I can turn it off once again, and it's going to turn into a zero because we have this command running every three seconds to request the state, basically this information and then pull out that value and store in here. And since this is just a parameter you can now request as a string, you can use it for any kind of you know, control inside of Reactor by, by doing that. All right, guys, that's basically my video on the HTTP device core. From this point on, it's just a matter of scaling it up and applying it to a lot of things and feeding some, uh, yeah, giving some feedback to Innovation Lab so we know how we can improve and um, add more convenience uh, to you to make it the best possible workaround solution for when we don't have an actual device core to control device.